The Expedition 40 crew is uh, now busy throughout the middle of their uh, work days. They're aboard the space station. Meanwhile, uh, HECO, or Hyperspectral Imager for the Coastal Ocean on the space station, is an ongoing experiment that uses a uh, special camera that separates light into hundreds of wavelength channels, which reveals information about the composition of water and land along the coast. And today we learn how the uh, Environmental Protection Agency is working with NASA to use this information. Let's head out to the uh, Payload Operations Integration Center at the Marshall Space Flight Center, where Lori Meggs is there, to tell us more about this unique uh, partnership. Lori? Imagine being able to take your smartphone and check the water quality in, say, your favorite fishing spot or boating location, or even being able to check to see if there's algae in the water if you want to go for a swim. Well, it's all in the works. I recently spoke with an EPA oceanographer who tells us how that organization is using the HICO sensors from the ISS and how it could eventually help us with, say, deciding on a trip to the beach. We've been using uh, data from the International Space Station from the HICO sensor to do water quality modeling uh, along the Florida coastline up in um, the Florida Panhandle area. Why do you do that? Well, we wanted to, because of the high resolution capability of HICO, we are now able to look into estuaries as well as into the feeder streams to the estuaries to determine um, water quality parameters such as chlorophyll, suspended solids concentration, and light attenuation. What have you learned from this? Well, one of the things we've learned is we've been able to take the data from the space station, process it in the models that gives us information, and then send that information to EPA managers in the form of a uh, phone application. And now with that phone application, EPA managers, as well as we hope other, the general public primarily, will be able to take that data and see it on their phones. What would I use that data for? Well, if you wanted to go spend a day in an estuary, either sailing, boating, or fishing, now you would have the capability of calling up an image of your favorite location, and you could determine for yourself what your water quality parameters are and if they're, if, if they're clean enough for you to go play or fish in. Is this all new from when we talked last? I know you were wanting to do that maybe last time, and now it's in stone, you can do that? Yeah, this is, is new because last time we talked, we were able to create the models to get the data. Now we've been able to take that data and uh, create a phone app. And now that phone app is in, will be soon in testing. So that now, and then after that, the idea is to make it uh, available to the public and to um, water quality managers. Um, the prototype app was well received with an EPA, and now we've evolved that prototype app into, we've added another parameter to it. And now we'll able to, you'll be able to pull up um, a water quality indicator called cyanobacteria. And cyanobacteria is, uh, is blue-green algae. And it's the green scum you pretty much see around ponds and in estuaries. But the, and generally, they're pretty innocuous um, algae. But sometimes they can turn toxic for whatever reason. And as such, um, small animals, depending on the concentration of the cyano cells, small animals can, can be at risk for being sick. And at high concentrations, there's um, a risk for humans getting sick. So now to have it, we've evolved the, our data as well as the app into just general water quality information to now uh, looking at environmental health and human health. How much does this excite you personally as an oceanographer? As an oceanographer, I think it's really exciting because, one, we get to, I, I enjoy working with the space station data and with all the personnel involved. So that's exciting in itself. But then the data itself, because it's really, and I keep using the word high resolution, I mean, 95 meter resolution is incredible for uh, remotely send satellite data. So now I can really look at the dynamics of processes in the estuaries. And from a personal standpoint, to now be able to have that information available on a phone app that I could pull up at any time to see if I want to go with my family to the beach or to the to lakes, that's, that's personally exciting.
And taking a live look at the Payload Operations Integration Center, Brian Blair is the pod today, the Payload Operations Director. He's being assisted by Jason Norwood. And then you see over there the PACOM, Cody Jones. That's the one who relays all of the information to and from the astronauts. So uh, they're busy at work today helping those astronauts accomplish all this great science.